everyone! Welcome back to another video, and this one's going to be a bit of a long one. And, well, to be honest, I've almost run out of things to actually do and play around with uh, where I currently am in the story, so I thought, what the heck, I'll just start and doing some side quests here. So, so this video is going to be actually a run-through of some of the side quests that we have here in Norvront. Now, I'm not going to be doing all of them, okay, because that will just take forever, and most of them are pretty pointless. This here is actually going to be the start of several very important, shall we say, cutscenes that we actually get. Well, somewhat important, they actually kind of have a series of quests that you can participate in and travel all across, like, these certain locations. And I thought, what the heck, I'll go ahead and start doing them here, just so that I have something to do, I guess. So the quests in this particular video are going to be the ones that you see in Lakeland. So again, these are actually part of a series of quests. We actually help these people kind of go through multiple quests as they come to like their own kind of journey and everything. And I thought they were cute, so I thought, what the heck. So uh, this is going to be the first of several series of videos I'm going to be doing. This one's going to be just the ones here in Lakeland. So this series of quests starts off with Scars of War. And we can actually accept it from this botanist named Marwi. I think that's how you pronounce it. And Marwa is concerned for the well-being of a friend. Oh, for woe! I can't take it anymore! Whatever am I to do about him? If only... <gasps> Don't sneak up on... Wait, I know you! You're Claire! Oh, lucky day! I was just thinking to myself, if only a great hero like Claire were here, she'd know what to do! You'll help me, yes? Oh, please say you will. Look at me. Have you ever seen anyone so pathetic? I have nowhere else to turn. Without you, I'm as good as... as... Yeah, calm down, buddy. Forgive me. I have a habit of getting ahead of myself. Anyhow, it's both a pleasure and an honor to meet you in the flesh. My name is Marwa, and I'm a woodcutter by trade. I spend most of my days harvesting lumber from the woodlands that surround the Ostal Imperative. In fact, I was making a delivery to the Imperative the other day when the Sin Eaters attacked. I was cowering in a corner, but I was able to witness your exploits in battle from afar. Wicked White, I've never seen someone fight like that! How formidable! How fierce! How ferocious you are! Why, I'd wager you're even stronger than Tolas! Oh right, there I go again. Tolus is a friend of mine, you see. Best friend I've known. He's a member of the Guard of the Imperative and a warrior of no small repute. They say people have lost counts of how many Sin Eaters he's slain. And yet, for the gods only know what reason, he just hasn't been acting like himself of late. I've asked time and again if anything's the matter, but he just frowns and shakes his head. Perhaps he feels that a humble woodcutter like myself wouldn't understand. But you! If a hero like you were to approach him, perhaps he'd feel more comfortable laying his troubles bare. There's no guarantee it'll work, but I dare say it's our best hope. In any event, I'm certain you'll enjoy each other's company. Why, you could regale one another with tales of adventure, discuss strategies and tactics for fighting the Sin Eaters, and so much more. I was just on my way to pay him a visit at the Imperative. You'll join me there, won't you? It would mean ever so much to me and told us both. Okay. So let's just head out and just teleport straight there. I know there's really no particular rhyme or reason to actually do these particular quests, except for just some good story. And, well, it will keep me entertained at least a little bit longer until um, part two comes out, so I need something to do. So we have Mo all over here. Claire, you came! Tolus' post is just over that way. Come with me, I'll introduce you. Hello there, Tolus. It's me, and you'll never guess who I brought along. Who goes there? Are we under attack? Do the Sin Eaters return? Whoa now, settle down there, friend. It's just me, Mawal. 
so we are not under attack? That is a relief. I forgive my outburst. Ever since the recent attack, I have been feeling a touch on edge. It seemed that anxiety and fatigue got the better of me. No, this simply will not do. I am descended from a line of the bravest knights in Lakeland. How can I defend the people if I'm here jumping at shadows like some skittish child? It's night time for my patrol. Pray lead me to my duties, Mawel. If you have something of import you wish to discuss with me, you can wait until my return. I should not be long. Tolas, wait! Tolas! I swear, something just ain't right with the man. Don't you get the same impression? I mean, he could be tired, but he definitely seems on edge, so... Yeah, I agree. Though I don't know the man. I knew it! You don't even know him, and you still can feel it, yes? I worry for the man. Something happened to him during that battle, I'm certain of it. What could it be? Perhaps his fellow guardsmen know something. Would you mind helping me ask around? Thanks, friend. I know I could count on you. Let's split up and see what we can figure out by the time Tolas returns from making his rounds. Yeah, I think he was just traumatized from the Sin Eater attack. Man, that takes me back. <laughs> Can't believe how old these quests are. Ugh, oh, so many videos, so little time. Alright, start with you. Tolas? Why, he's one of the bravest men I've ever known. One of the mightiest warriors as well. The Sin Eater struck his wrecked men bore the brunt of the attack. Lesser men would have never made it back alive. It's no surprise, though. After all, he's descended from one of the most prominent lines of knights in all of Lakeland. Why, they say his great-grandfather served under Sir Ostol himself. Talk about a pedigree. I see where this is going, actually. Right away. He's having trouble trying to live up to the name of his ancestors, and, well, he's suffering for it. Tolas, I, I pity the man. Or didn't you hear? Word has it he was the only one from his regiment to make it back alive. His men fought valiantly at his side, they did. But in the end, he watched every last one of them fall. Cruel twist of fate for such a brave leader of men. Ah, I get it. See, all that's all kind of just lining up. Drat, drat it all. I've been asking around, but these guards won't even give me the time of day. Help you fare better than I. What's this? Talus lost his entire regiment in attack, you say? No wonder he hasn't been himself since that day. Thank you, friend. This certainly puts matters in a different light. But what can we do to ease his burden? That's the question. Oh, before I forget, this is for you. Consider it a token of thanks for coming all the way here to help my friend. I'd be much obliged if you could stay around for a bit. And we get food! Nice! Okay, so the next one is his secret shame. Mowell wears an increasingly uneasy expression. Whatever is keeping Tolas? He should have returned from his rounds by now. Do you suppose he's forgotten about us? No, that wouldn't be like him. Call it a hunch, but I have a bad feeling about this. Let's split up and look for him. I'll go see if he's returned to the stronghold. Why don't you search around outside? Well, we are outside. Oh, it's so beautiful here. Yep, he's in trouble, all right. Oh, I was expecting a Sin Eater. I love what they did to the machinists in this game. Well, it was always one of my least favorite, if not my least favorite, job to do before, but now it's just... It's a lot of fun to play it! Plus it looks so cool.
Thank you, friend. You, you saved my life. Oh, the ignominy of it all. I, a knight and veteran of a thousand battles, nay laid low by some puny beast I should have been able to slay with mine eyes closed. And yet the moment I drew my sword, my arm began to tremble. Ever since that day, it's been like this. I'd lost men to the Sin Eaters before, of course, but this time was different. So powerful was our foe, so crushing was our defeat, I could still hear the screams of my men echoing endlessly throughout my skull. Why, damn it? why do I still live when they had to die? No, I know the answer. It's because I am a coward. I could have risked my life to save them, yet I fought only to preserve my own worthless hide. My superiors, my fellow soldiers, sing my praises only because they do not know the truth. If they did, I would be cast out from the guard in dishonor. I am a craven, unworthy of my grandfather's blood. I beg you, friend, do not speak to the others. Malwell in particular, of my terrible secret. I must carry the shame of my deeds on my own until such a day as I can redeem myself. Your friend worries for you. And so I should tell him, you say? Indeed, Malwell's concern is touching, and yet... I would ponder this matter alone. Pray leave me be for a while. And so that's the problem. There we go. Made it back alive. Thank you ever so much for tracking down Tolas. I am relieved indeed to see my friend safe and sound. And yet, he's barely spoken a word to me since his return. Whatever is the matter this time? Hey, a much needed respite. Frustrated by his friend's stubborn silence. Yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Astinian, but... <laughs> I mean, that would be cool if we ended up like meeting people very similar to our friends back in the source. That would be great. Come now, Tolas. It's not like you to brood and mope like this. I'm your friend, am I not? Why do you refuse to tell me what happened? Well, if you insist on being so goddamn stubborn, I'll just have to ask Claire here. You'll tell me, won't you? Well... Be no need for that. The shameful tale is mine, and I should be the one to do the telling. Tolas, I had no idea. Now you see me for who I truly am. Not a proud knight and leader of men, but a craven coward who stood there trembling as those who trusted me with their lives died in agony. That's enough, Tallas. You face a far more horrific than most men see in their lifetimes. There is no shame in being afraid. Why, if it had been me out there on that battlefield that day, I'd have turned tail and run at the first sight of a Sin Eater, crying for my mum all the way home. And I wouldn't be the only one. I can only begin to imagine the pain and grief you feel, but still, you live to fight another day. As far as I'm concerned, I thank the gods for their mercy that my best friend is still with me. Your words are most moving, but I fear I cannot so easily forgive myself. I am a knight descended from a proud line of those who protected and served. I must hold myself to a higher standard than ordinary men. And this is what I have become, cowering before the enemy like a spineless stable boy. My great-grandfather, bless his brave soul, must be turning in his grave at the dishonor I brought him. From this moment forward, I will redouble my efforts to defend the people and serve this realm. Yes, I will not rest for a moment until I have fully atoned for my grievous misdeeds. Look at yourself, Talas. I wager you haven't had a proper night's sleep ever since the battle. Then you can worry about atoning for your perceptive failures. If you won't listen to me, at least listen to Claire here. You agree with me, don't you? See? That makes two of us. I know you're a stubborn arse, but even you must realize that you're in no shape to fight the way you are. 
Don't you understand? If you keep going out there in your current condition, this time you're like to even get more men. No, even yourself killed. Your words ring true. As much as it pains me, I'm happy it would be for the best if I took a brief respite from my duties. Tall lass, finally you're speaking some sense, my friend. Claire and I will go and speak with your commanding officer straight away. There'll be no need for that. You have business you must attend to, yes? As far as I have fallen, I am not so wretched that I cannot see to my own affairs. I will speak with the commander myself. Hey, Gads, he's right. There's. Hey, Gads, he's right. There's a delivery I need to be making. Would you be so kind as to follow after him? Call me overcautious, but I fear he's just going to rush straight back out into the battlefield as soon as we look away. Thank you, Claire. You're a true friend. Despite the fact that I don't know anything else about you and I just kind of dragged you into this whole thing. Oh, whatever. Well, at least he seems to be working at it. Ah, uh, Claire, I trust Melwell sent you. While my friend's concern is touching, it is entirely unwarranted. I have no intention of going back on my word. Well, this is an honor. None other than Claire Fay, the hero of the day. The imperative is forever in your debt. I can scarcely count how many lives were saved through your bravery. Worry not, for I have already signed the papers granting told us a leave of absence. I dare say you have earned yourself a rest as well. Why don't the two of you head to Claremont and wash your worries away? Soak in the springs at Claremont? Yes, I suppose that might be nice. What say you, Claire? Well, if you do not have any pressing matters to attend to, I would very much appreciate the company. The waters at Claremont are known for their soothing and healing properties. There's no better place to recuperate after a hard-fought battle. That sounds nice. I myself have never been to a hot spring, but I really would like to try it. story. If, if nothing else, it's very sweet. Glad you saw fit to join me, Claire. You must confess this is my first time coming to such a place. I take it this building here is where we change our clothes? Feel free to go on ahead of me. I fear it may take me some time to remove all this armor. And it's raining. Of course it's raining. Well, you know what, I think I will go ahead and just pause it right there. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I'm back. Yes, as you can see, I've already changed out into my clothes. It is a bright, sunny day. Ah, oh, he's kind of cute. Claire, you also fought in the battle that day, yes? How is it that you were able to face such a fearsome foe without losing your nerve? Is there some secret you can impart to me? <laughs> you do get used to it. And, I mean, we have faced worse, so I'm going to say that one. Yeah, I face worse. Foes more fearsome than the Sin Eaters? Why, I can hardly believe such a thing could exist in this world. Well, maybe not this world. But forgive me my rudeness. Of course, it is not that I doubt your tales. The expression on your face and the composure with which you carry yourself speaks volumes. I thought myself a veteran of war, but clearly whatever experience I pose is pales in comparison to yours. But even that matters little anymore. I've devoted my entire life to forging myself into the perfect warrior. And yet look at me now. I am no more than a bent and rusted blade, no longer fit for the battlefield. Looking back, I cannot help but wonder. What was it all for? No, oh, it's raining again? What of you, Claire? What gives you the strength and courage to go on as you do? What is it you are fighting for? I 
I found something I must protect. I like that one. Something you must protect. Now that I've lost everything, is there anything I have worth protecting anymore? Almost my entire life I've lived as a warrior. What was it that I was truly fighting for? Was it out of my own pride, or was it to honor my family's name? What was it that I had and then lost that I'm now unable to so much as swing my blade? Forgive the intrusion, Sir Tolas. Oh, this can't be good. Something bad's happened. Grave news from the Imperative. A supply caravan was intercepted by a stray senator. Your friend, Marwell. He's missing, sir! What's this you say? They just left the Redicus's round for the Imperative when the Fiend attacked. I raced here as fast as my legs could carry me. Understood. I will set off at once. You two, return to the... You two, return with all haste and rejoin the search party. Aye, sir. By your leave. I'll go with you. Thank you. Given my current state, I would feel far more confident with you at my side. This was when we were sitting down and enjoying ourselves. Of course it happens. So... there he is. Wow, he changed back into his armor fast. Once again, I find myself in your debt. Truth be told, I don't know how I will react if confronted by a Sin Eater. But this I do know. My friend needs me. I must do what I can. Okay, resolve to regain. Oh, I'm guessing this is the last one for this quest. Okay, Toles would immediately depart in search of his friend. I trust you are ready. We must depart at once. I only pray that we are not already too late. Our man said the caravan was waylaid not long after departing from Radisitka's round, and that it was where we'll begin our search. Let's make our way there with all speed. Yeah, it always feels like that. Just as we're sitting down, enjoying ourselves, something bad happens. So there's the caravan. It would seem that this was the site of the ambush. So tall us. And could this be Madame Faye? Tales of your valor in the battle against the Sin Eaters precede you. Well, glad are we to have a hero such as you fighting for our cause. Enough with the pleasantries! How fares the search effort? My, my apologies, Sir Tallas. We have already- We have found and led to safety all missing members of the caravan save one. The woodcutter, Marwell. According to the survivors, the young man was forced to flee in the opposite direction from the rest of the group. His precise whereabouts, sadly, remain unknown. Understood. The forest or the ruins nearby should be the most logical destinations to hide and seek shelter. Claire, let us split up and cover as much ground as we are able. I will make first for Wolves of Shadow. I leave the forest to you. I suggest you sweep it from the south. Let us meet back at Radeska's round when we are through. And I will make for Ostel Imperative and its vicinity, in the event that he has wandered his way there. Go in safety, my friends. You know, I gotta love the effort that they put into this game when I look at all these trees. I really do. It's actually quite beautiful. Because it actually feels like a world that I can believe as being consumed by light. Because they wasted no time and effort into putting such beautiful details in. Because we actually have trees and plants in this world that do grow this violet, and it's really to survive in places that have harsh light. This is actually a fact, and I just love that they did that.
Man, it's been a long time since I had to fight some Sin Eaters. Just like random Sin Eaters. And right up there. So it doesn't look like he's around here in the forest. Scan the surrounding forest, but spy nothing of note. There is naught to do but return to Radicasso's round and hope that Tolas has fared better in his search. Probably. Oh. Go away, Lake Viper. I don't want to fight right now. Oh. Flew straight into the destination. Stay back, fiend! Oh, that don't sound good. <sighs> Tolas! And clear! I thought I was going to be that Sin Eater's dinner for sure. My friends, how can I ever thank you? Hm. You were fortunate that we found you when we did. Why in the God's name did you allow yourself to be separated from your companions? I... I do not know. It all happened so fast. The others, are they okay? Worry not, they are fine. For better or for worse, you were the only one to require your own private search party. Hey, Gads, I really am sorry about all that. Trouble has a way of finding me, even if I don't go searching for it. But more importantly, look at you, Tolas, swinging your blade like the brave warrior I've always known. Indeed. You can thank Claire here for that. What did I do? When Sin Eaters came that day, I felt fear as I have never felt before. My pride as a warrior, the lives of the men under my command, all were consumed by the primal urge for survival. And so on that day, faced with my greatest test, with a chance to do my ancestors proud, I shrank from the challenge rather than rising to it, and I have cursed myself every moment since. What I would not give to have that day over again, if I had stood with my men on the front line, served as their shield, how many lives could I have saved? That one thought grabbed hold of my mind and would not release its grip. Since then, every time I faced an enemy, the image would appear in front of me. The image of me on that day, retreating to the rear as my men fought in vain against a horrible foe. Every time I so much as grasped the hilt of my blade, it would all come flooding back. The sight of my men falling, the splatter of blood, and the screams. Always the screams. Tolas. The day may never come that I can fully forgive myself for my cowardice. But in talking to Claire, there is one thing I now understand. If I allow myself to be haunted by the shame and the specters of that day, I will only repeat the mistakes of the past. No, I must overcome my grief and bitter regrets and fight on for the sake of those I might still yet protect. I could not have accomplished that alone. No, I could not have accomplished it without you at my side, Claire. As I watched you fighting beside me, with an unflinching sense of purpose, despite all the horrors you have seen, for the first time since the battle that day, my sword arm ceased trembling, and I felt a measure of peace. You have done more for me than you will ever know. For this, I thank you. There's more I would say, but that can wait for another time. Melwell, we should return to the Imperative. Doubtless I was not the only one worried sick about you. You're more than welcome to join us, Claire, if there is not somewhere else you need to be. Very well then, let us be off. Many thanks again, Claire. I very much hope to see you after. I really don't feel like we...
should be thanked. I mean, I mean, that was nice. It was a sweet story and I liked it, but I don't know how I'm supposed to feel, really. Oh well, what can you do? So it looks like this little series of quests is going to be over soon and we'll be moving on to the next one afterwards. Yep, everyone's okay. Just have a few scares along the way, but all's well that ends well, yes? Certainly made the right call asking you for your aid. There, once again you allow me to express my most sincere gratitude for all you've done. I did not come along with you dead, I may very well have ended up dead before I ever regained the courage to fight. There's one more thing I realized reflecting on the matter. In all my all-consuming desire to prove my valor and do my family proud, I lost sight of the most important reason that I fight. From today, I shall put lofty goals out of my mind, along with my past demons, as best as I am able, and fight as best I can for those who need me today. You have taught me an important lesson today, both of you. Ha! Huh, that's right! I was wondering when you were going to come around to thanking the man who brought Claire here from the Crystarium in the first place. Which reminds me, I have a delivery to make! Be safe, my friend, and thank you for everything. You as well, Claire. I will forever be grateful for all you've done. Should you ever need a respite from the road, you are always welcome at the Imperator. Though we can offer little ease, I hope that you will honor us with your presence again one day. Oh, that's nice. And which one? Which one? Why not? Okay, quest complete. That was a nice little story. All right, so that's going to be it for this quest, and we're immediately moving on to the next one. So, be back in just a second. Yeah, quit showing off, Claire. Okay, so we're back. So this is going to be the next series of quests. So I think there's supposed to be just two really important series, I think, throughout Lakeland. Maybe plus a third one once we're done with these two. And I decided to go for more Astrologian this time around. Okay, so the next series of quests is going to start off on this one called On Her Own. Oh dear, whatever am I to do? Hmm? Forgive me, I didn't see you there. You've been coming seeking treatment, I presume. I'm afraid we're not taking any new patients at the moment. Hmm? You're not ailing, you say? I'm sorry, I simply assumed. This is an infirmary, you see. Or, rather, I should say, it used to be. My father ran it, you see, but he... He is no longer with us. Devoured by a sin eater at the Battle of Home Mistress Witch, or so I was told. I... I did not even have the chance to say goodbye. And so I am alone in the world now. There is one man, a member of the guard and dear friend of my father's, who's promised he would look after me if things came to the worst. But then he was transferred to the distant and dangerous post, and thus I am unable to do so much as share with him the unfortunate news. Hmm. You look like someone who can hold her own in battle. Would you be so kind as to brave the road and convey my message to this man? Of course I would compensate you well for your efforts. The man's name is Nildim. And, God's willing, he still serves at Radagasta's round. Pray seek him out and tell him that Kolpas lives no longer. It pains me to ask a stranger to be the bearer of such grim news. It would mean everything to me. The road is long and fraught with danger. I would not get very far on my own. I cannot force you to do this, but can you find it in your heart to help me? Thank you, my friend. I have no words to express my gratitude. My name is Kalia. Might I ask yours? Gentle name indeed. Thank you, Claire, and be safe. I seek out the guard nailed in at Sredikoska's round and tell him that Kolopas lives no more. And thank you, my friend. This means the world to me. Kolopas, I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay, so we're leaving the fort. And the round shouldn't be too far.
You know, it's funny how often people here are so willing to ask for help from a complete stranger. Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe we need a little bit of that in this world, you know. Just expecting to help out with very little in return. But always be polite and thank them. Hey, big guy. Hmm, something I could do for you? City has got cold this. Say it ain't so! Bloody fool, how many times did I tell him? Forget the damn battle and stay home with Kalia. The girl needs you. But did he listen? Forgive me, friend. It's just, the man was like a brother to me. Anyhow, I'd like nothing more than to rush to Kalia's side with ye, but I can't very well run off like that, at least not without finding someone to cover my post. If you could spare a minute, mayhap you could go and have a talk with my superior? Captain Minas is a stern man, but he's also a reasonable one. I reckon he wouldn't begrudge me for a brief respite to see the girl. After all, she's almost family. Can't thank you enough, friend. You'll find the captain inside the tower. At best, be getting back to my post. I look forward to hearing the good word. Inside the tower, or I guess I should say, what's left of it. And... How do we get up there? I did not notice the stairs until right there. Kofi is slain by a Sin Eater. Are you certain of this? Truly, this is a sad day for our cause. He was a fine physician. One of the best we had. I long since lost count of how many men were plucked back from the brink of death by his hand. Ah, uh, he was also one of the bravest men I knew. Though he was no warrior, he did not hesitate to venture beyond the safe walls of the Crestarium and tend to patients on the front lines. It was in this spirit that he chose to establish the infirmary at Fort Job. Now he is gone, and we must carry on without him. As for Naildin's request for leave of absence, consider it granted. Tell him to do what he must for Kofolias' girl. I will see that his post is covered. In truth, we can ill afford to lose even a single good man at a time like this, and yet there are certain things that must not be compromised. Tell Naildin he may go to the girl's side with my blessing. Well, that's nice. An understanding officer. There you are. Oh, there you are. What's the good word, friend? The captain said, what? <laughs> Must be going soft in his older age. Figured he'd at least have told me to hurry back. Goes to show you just what people thought of Kofias. He was a good man, treated every patient with dignity and respect, be they prince or pauper. He wouldn't think twice about risking his own life when others' lives were in danger. Could barely swing a sword, yet it wouldn't stop him from braving monster-infested forests, road roamed by sin eaters, and god knows what else. He even showed his face here at the round from time to time. Of course, that's what did him in the end. And yet, I reckon he died with no regrets, save for leaving poor Kalia behind to fend for herself. Anyhow, you have my thanks, friend. And with that, I best prepare to hit the road. There's someone who needs me. Yeah, I noticed you're leaving, but in a hurry. Carrying on, Nailden would go to the side of someone who needs him. Well, there's nothing I'd be gained from standing around here moping. Kalia needs me, so I best take to the road. Gophias lost both his dear wife and parents not long after the girl was born. Raised Kalia all by himself, he did. They weren't rich by any means, but still he saw that she wanted for nothing. Can't imagine what the poor girl's going through, all alone in this dangerous world. As Kofias' close friend, it is my duty to be there for her and see to whatever she needs. Come to think of it, don't suppose you'd be interested in coming along? I'm just one man, and looking after Kalia isn't likely to be an easy task. You're a lifesaver, friend. I'm sure it'll mean the world to the girl. And with that, I best be gathering my belongings. See you back at Fort John. You barely know us, though. How do you know you can trust us? It kind of looked like he was running back into the 
around there. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this forest. And the tower, it looks gorgeous. See what we can do to help her out. Uncle Nielden, you came all this way here for me? And you, Claire, how can I ever repay you for your generosity? Ain't nothing of it, girl. Poor thing. You've been through more than any child should have to suffer. But don't you worry. Uncle Nielden and Aunt Claire are here to see your every need. <laughs> Aunt Claire, I like that. You truly are too kind. Everyone has been... Why, even those here in the forts I have never really spoken to before have stopped by to offer their sympathies. Whatever have I done to deserve such kindness? Reckon your father is a thank for that. The people loved him, Kalia, and they know that his daughter and assistant is cut from the same cloth. You've got nothing to feel guilty about. What... What are you saying, Uncle Nailton? It's my fault. All of it. I never should have let him go to that terrible place. Don't even think of blaming yourself for that, Kalia. Your father went there because he felt it was his duty. A hundred men couldn't have stopped that stubborn bastard once he made up his mind. Yes, that is what everyone tells me. That father was a talented physician and a great man. That he is a hero who did not shy in the face of danger and sacrificed himself in the name of our cause. This I know, and yet... and yet... To me, he was my father! As cruel as it sounds, I couldn't care less that he died a hero. I wanted him to live, but still, he left me. He... he did not even give me the chance to say goodbye. Kalia, your old man may have left you here, but you never left his mind and heart, not for one moment. Ye were more important to him than anything. I know this, and yet I do not understand. His duty, his patience, his daughter. How could any one man be so selfless? Did he ever stop to think of himself? Forgive me, my friends. I am still feeling a bit overwhelmed by it all. No apologies needed, girl. You've had it harder than any of us. And yet, we have to carry on without him somehow. All of us do. So tell me, Kalia, what do you plan on doing now? The sick and wounded still show up at these doors. My heart aches for them, yet I am but a physician's assistant. I cannot offer them the treatment that father once did. And so I think I will head for the Crystarium. I will shutter the doors of the infirmary, sell the fur- I will shut at the doors of the infirmary, sell the furniture and equipment for what little they are worth, and use the coin to fund my trip. Aye, perhaps that would be for the best. It'd be safe there, at least. As a good place as any to start a new life. There's a residence hall there, the Catenaries, they call it, where they give room and board to refugees and others looking to make the Crystarium their new home. You can take shelter there till you find a job and place of your own. That's a nice idea. I like that idea. Say, Claire, would you mind going on ahead to make the arrangements? The boy, Sigham, there. The boy Sickham there is an acquaintance of mine. Space is always tight, but let him know of Kalia's situation, and I reckon he'll be able to find a room for her. Can I even begin to express the depths of my gratitude, friend? Thank you. Probably for the best if she ends up going to the Crystarium. But I have a feeling that that's not going to happen.
Probably could have teleported back too, but eh, why not? Wasn't that far anyway. But you know what? I like that idea. Like they set up like these special rooms just for refugees until they can find work. I mean, I think that there are plenty of ways that they could abuse that kind of privilege, but you know what? I have a feeling that Graha would have done all that for a reason. <laughs> Uh, maybe they have it so that you could stay here for only a certain length of time and you have um, So many days that you could stay here without looking for a job or something So where is it? through here. Alright, I know this place. Alright, yeah, I've been through here so many times. Greetings and welcome to the Cataneries. How may I be of service to you today? The young girl has been orphaned at Fort Job, you say? That is tragic indeed. But worry not. A room just opened up earlier today. I will reserve it for Miss Kalia straight away. Time is most fortunate. Ever since the raid on Homemaster Switch, refugees have been pouring in day after day. Our rooms can only hold so many. But do not worry. We will do everything we can for our young acquaintance. There are others who have suffered similar tragedies and can doubtless sympathize with her plight. She will be among friends. Needless to say, I and the rest of the staff will also watch over her closely and see to her needs until such times as she can accumulate to life here in the Crystaria. Tell her to come in safety and that we look forward to welcoming her to our halls. That's so nice. I love this city. It's just so... Everyone here is just so nice to us. Probably like one of the nicest, if not the friendliest city that we've been to in a long, long time. Is she up there? Ah, uh, there you are. It just all went well at the Crystarium. Afraid to say we had something of an incident here. I'll let Kalia give you the news. I was gone for a few minutes. What could have happened? Welcome back, Claire. I cannot thank you enough for all you have done for me. Look, I very much look forward to settling into my new home at the Crystarium. And yet I feel there's been something of a complication. Uncle Nailton and I had all but finished packing my things when... Ah, uh, but forgive me a moment. I must collect my thoughts. What happened? In father's footsteps, Kalia wears an expression of great concern. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. My apologies, Claire. I fear we have a bit of a situation on our hands. While you were away kindly making arrangements for me at the Crystarium, a young man was rushed here with the most horrific symptoms. Aye, one of the new recruits here at Fort Job. A nasty fiend got him, one of those damn tree men, and got him bad. As his brother-in-arms tell it, he was lucky to survive. Sadly, he won't be surviving much longer in his current state. See, the beast that nicked him had some nasty venom in its claws. The way the poor boy's convulsing is probably spreading through his body even as we speak. He's resting in bed for now, but if we don't do something soon... Searching through Father's belongings, I found a book containing recipes for a wide variety of antidotes. The instructions seemed quite clear enough. I'm quite confident I could mix one up, provided I had the proper ingredients. Unfortunately, that's easier said than done. The most vital ingredient is a swab of the original poison with which the man was stricken. And furthermore, the medicine must be mixed immediately after obtaining the sample while the venom is still fresh. We know precisely which type of beast did it, and there are more than plentiful in these parts. We would not have to travel too far to we would not have to travel far to procure the poison, provided we have someone with the strength to fell the fiend. The soldiers here have been so kind to my father and me. I simply cannot let them down in their time of need. Oh Claire, I beg of you, will you help me? You can count on old Neil Den too, my girl. I'm no slouch and bad of laughter all, or have ye forgotten? 
Thank you, Uncle Nailden, but no. You must stay here with our patient. Make sure that he has water to drink and tell him that I will return shortly with the antidote. I, I understand. Watch yourself out there, Kalia. You know, she kind of looks like our little sister. All right, Claire, we have no time to lose. The creatures we seek lurk in the woodlands just west of the fort. I will meet you there. You know something? You see, I've always kind of pictured Claire as an only child. Uh, I kind of pictured that her parents died when she was very young, so she was kind of brought up to raise basically herself. At least that's kind of the story that was inside my head at the time. So I kind of figured like her father may have died like shortly before she was born and her maybe her mother died like shortly after she was born when she was still very young. Uh, she kind of made a living kind of just doing favors for people just kind of trying to survive and at least that's the idea that I kind of had. I actually kind of wrote a fan fiction all about that but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I kind of figured that if Claire had a younger sister, she would probably look a lot like Kalia there, so that's actually cute. Here we are, Claire. Do you see those ghastly living trees? They are the fiends that poisoned that poor soldier. Here's a file you may use to collect the sample. Father's records make it clear that the venom is quick to break down. If too much time passes, I will have to ask you to collect a fresh sample. Also, be warned, these beasts are not likely to part with their poison willingly. Like a snot, you will have to weaken them somewhat before they allow you to get close enough to do the deed. Be safe, Claire. I will stand by here and prepare the rest of the ingredients. Okay, I did not expect the tree men here to have venom. I was kind of thinking more like one of those lake vipers or something. Man, those things just creep me out, though. <laughs> they, they always kind of scared me whenever I saw them. Oh man, my healing is really suffering right now. I I'm sure if you watched my previous videos, you know I'm really mostly about DPS, but... I mean, I've gotten into a lot of tanking recently ever since Shadowbringers, because I was playing through the whole thing as a as a dark knight, but man, I really need to get back into shape when it comes to healing. Procured the sample yet? No, I did not. I was so busy talking that I did not think. Damn it. Nothing else is helping me to improve my healing again. Like I said, I have not done a lot of healing at all since Shadowbringers came out. I think it was really only to kind of level everything up. Okay, that time it worked. I thought for sure that we had to weaken it and then take it, kind of like what we've done in previous quests, but I guess we just had to kill it. 
Claire, is that what I think it is? Okay, a vicious liquid we infused from a trifle gives off an acid aroma. Perfect! Yes, I do believe this is exactly what I need to mix up the antidote. Yay! Okay, what's next? Her true calling. Oh, and it looks like the last one as well. This shouldn't take long. Keep a lookout and make sure no nasty fiends sneak up on us. That should do it. Quickly now, we must hurry back to the fort while the boy still draws breath. Thinking only of her patient, Kalia runs on ahead. Unaware that the scent of her medicine may attract unwanted attention, it would be wise to go after her. Oh no. Yep, like father, like daughter. If she's not careful, she'll end up going the exact same way. Oh no. Ugh, oh, we just left you and gotten into trouble already? I always like those things. Like, they, they look so pathetic at first, but then the wings unfold and they just turn so majestic. I think that would make a cool mount if it was just a little bit bigger. Yeah, we ride around on, um, like, the lizard part of him on the ground, but when he flies, the wings unfold. That'd be cool. But yeah, Kalia, if you choose to take up duty as like as a new physician and everything, good for you, but please don't go running off here without a bodyguard or something. That or learn how to fight. Like maybe Uncle Nailden will be able to look after her from here on out. That'd be cool. nice. I was not looking, not thinking, before I knew it, the beast was upon me. Fortunately, I am unhurt, and the medicine is safe. It's a miracle! No, it was you, Claire. I should have to think of what would have happened if you had not rushed to my side as you did. Well, that's sweet, but we really didn't do too much. And my foolishness has nearly cost us too much time. Come, we must hurry back to Fort Job before it is too late. Yeah, girl, so... My advice, learn either how to fight or hire bodyguards to go with you next time. Good to see you back in one piece, friend. Kalia's inside tending to the boy. I reckon we should leave her alone till the job is done. Oh, your hair! The treatment is complete. The poison has been flushed from his system. Though it will take time for him to regain his strength, the man will live. My hair? I simply tied it back the way Father always did when he was working. He would always say that he wanted nothing to block his field of vision when examining his patients. Wicked White, if ye ain't the spitting image of him. And mind ye, I ain't just talking about your looks. Why, whatever do you mean, Uncle Nailden? Fire's burning in your eyes, the way he could have think- the way you couldn't think of nothing but the poor boy who needed your help. The way you didn't hesitate to fling yourself into harm's way for his sake. I swear, it's as if your whole family is determined to send old Uncle Nailed into an early grave out of sheer fright. Like father, like daughter, for better and for worse. Is it possible that I resemble father more than I thought? 
Aye, girl, aye. And not just your own father, but his father before him. You never met him, but I did, and I can say it for certain. You come from a long line of folk with more compassion than common sense. Kofias' father wasn't a healer, but a soldier, one of the first members of the Crystarium Guard. Time and again, he put his life on the line here at Fort Job to keep those who were building the city safe. To Kofias and I, he was a hero. And so we swore a vow one day we follow in his footsteps and protect the people of this land from danger. That's how I came to join the guard. Kofias, on the other hand, was never much one for fighting. He struggled with this at first, but eventually he was able to find a calling of his own. And whatever he lacked in brute strength, he more than made up for it with his courage. Courage and courage that I see is alive and well in his daughter. Courage indeed. Wouldn't ye agree? Wouldn't ye agree, Claire? You're no strangers to acts of risking your life for the sake of others, after all. Come now, Uncle Nildy's no fool. Don't think I haven't heard from my fellow guards about your rescue mission with Captain Lena during the raid on Holmister. Rushing into a den of sin eaters just to save those poor villagers. That's a selfish act of courage and self-sacrifice if ever I heard one. Is this true, Claire? That you risked your very life to save the people of home, mister? But they were strangers to you, yes? How... how was it that you were able to put yourself in peril for the sake of total strangers? That's true, I mean... Well, first of all, it was part of the story, but I couldn't just stand back and do nothing. I see. And so, you did what you felt you had to do. Thanks to you, it is finally clear to me. I know what I must do. Claire, Uncle Nailden, pray send word to the Crystarium I will not be needing a room. I intend to stay here at Fort Job and carry on Father's legacy. I know this is a dangerous place, and my own skills pale in comparison to his, and yet there is no one else better equipped to tend to these people. I would do what I can. But I must. Father left behind a wealth of knowledge. If I studied diligently and worked to hone my skills, then one day, one day perhaps I might be the healer he once was. Aye, my girl. I reckon you just might. None can say what tomorrow will bring, and yet this I know. You've already done your father proud. If only that stubborn bastard could have been here to see this day. Thank you for always believing in me, but my journey to follow in Father's footsteps has only begun. That's the spirit, girl. But remember, you needn't walk the path alone. If you're ever finding yourself overwhelmed by it all, you can always give Uncle Nedley a shout. Thank you, my friend. I will. And you, Claire, I was but a stranger to you, and yet you have shown me more kindness than anyone. Your selflessness has inspired me to find something deep within me that's were not for you, I would not I never would have known was there. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Eh, I don't feel like we deserve it. But alright. Okay, so that's done there. And if I remember correctly, there should be at least one more special series of quests. I think that's actually just to wrap everything up here. Okay, so let's go on and see what that quest is all about. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, everyone, I'm back. It took me a little while to figure out exactly where to go, but here we are back at the Imperative, and we're about to speak with Tolus again. So he is actually going to be part of this whole quest here, including Kalia. I don't know what this whole thing is about, but here we are. So it's called Flowering Friendship. Tolus would express his gratitude for all that you've done on his behalf. Ah, uh, Claire, thanks to no small part to you, I've been able to fully resume my duties with the guard. As a matter of fact, I was just about to depart for the Crystarium to, or to secure a shipment of building materials. 
I trust that you too will be returning to the city? If so, then pray give me the pleasure of your company on the road. Thank you so very much, my friend. The roads are dangerous these days, and I would feel all the better with a capable combatant at my side. Together, I dare say we could do our fair share to clear the path of threats for the travelers who will come after us. You may be pleased to know that the supplier I mean to meet with is none other than our mutual friend, Mawil. No doubt he'll be delighted to see you again as well. At any rate, see to whatever preparations you may have. I am ready to depart whenever you are. Do 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 do. Oh, he already got a head start. One can barely take a few steps without running into one of these fiends, no? As you can see, I had no trouble seeing to the threat. This is what you've done for me, Claire. I am able to summon all of my strength and skill once more, and I fear for any beast that dares stand in my path. You know what? That's actually a cute idea here. Ah, uh, no, I'm sorry. I just my fanfictiony brain just kind of came up with an idea. Maybe Tolis and um, Kalia get together. You know, I think it would be good because. I mean, she'd be rushing off into danger, and so she needs protection, and he's probably going to get hurt, so he'll need someone to look after him. You see those floating nasties over there? They have grown plentiful in these parts of late. Well, we could cut them down easily enough. Their endless screams and tittering are like as not to attract more of their feet. Fortunately, we recently discovered a method for dealing with these creatures quickly and effortlessly. The only ever handy stink bomb. When thrown, they emit a stench that's, while barely tolerable for us, is positively sickening to creatures with sensitive noses. This will drive the beasts away, as well as deterring any of their friends from joining the party. Here's a handful of them. Why not give them a try? Oh sure, send us in to do it. I thought you learned your lesson. The angry and annoyed aims you wearily. <laughs> hey, that's a panic screech, flees from the scene. A moment later, a sense of raw refutes and night soil wafts in on the air. Oh, no. Oh, that that's a horrible thought. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's eyes was warily. Was a way in a rush. It's like miniature mobiles or something like that. Tries out, races from the scene, Sanch is growing unbearable. Okay, let's get out of here then. Rather effective, wouldn't you say? Thanks to tools like this, even new recruits and others less comfortable with a blade than you or I can hold their own against all manner of nasty creatures. In fact, it was none other than Mawel who procured these for us. As he tells it, they've long been favored by woodcutters, gatherers, and the like seeking to protect themselves during forays deep into the forest. Speaking of Mawel, we shouldn't keep him waiting. Let us be on our way. I was wondering, like, what the heck was the point of all that? And then I realized that, that they're probably going to be giving some to Kalia. That way it's going to make her job a lot easier collecting ingredients and everything. But again, I kind of like the idea of the two of them getting together. That's a cute idea. The beasts are out in numbers today. We've been under Manda of late, and this is the price we pay. Ah! Get back, you goddamn fiend! Cry for help? Come, Claire, we must hurry to the man's aid. Oh, he's certainly taking up the part of a hero again. And who wants to bet whose cry that was? I think I know. Oh, 
Did not expect to see him there. Well, I'll be damned. Claire, what are you doing here? He sneaked me in the leg. I worry not, it is but a flesh wound. I am Tolus, and I serve the Crystarium Guard at the Ostel Imperative. How do you fare, my brother in arms? I'm Nilden, servant at Radicosta's realm. As for my wounds, they could have been much worse, and I thank you for that. Come to the forest to pick herbs and resonance for a batch of potions. It seems I got a bit too wrapped up in the task. Or I knew it, the beasts were on top of me. Yeah, my gratitude. As well as my apologies for that nasty wound you suffered coming to my aid. Don't you worry, though. We have a talented physician at Fort Job who'd be more than happy to patch you right up. Appreciate the offer, but that will not be necessary. It is but a scratch, and my friend and I have places we must... There's no way I'm looking to send the man who saved my damned life back out there looking like that. Or, I mean, I insist. Fort Job's just a short walk away, and our physician's truly is one of the best. Of course, I speak of Kalia. She's been holding down the fort damn well since last we met. People swear she's the second coming of her dear old father. Bless his name. You'll be coming along too, won't you, Claire? The girl will be beside herself with joy to see you again. Very well. If you two are Claire, very well. If you two are a friend of Claire, I see no reason to refuse. Pray lead the way. Now that's what I wanted to hear. The fort's just a waste in that direction. Let's be off, eh? Aww. Beautiful little friendship already showing up. And see, this is how they meet! And I think it would be adorable! One is nothing to speak of, but I am not a man who would refuse the kindness of his friends. Claire, what a lovely surprise! How ever have you been? I've been doing good. There'll be time enough for small talk later, Kalia. Right now this man needs your help. Got himself right scratched up saving old Uncle Nildy from a nasty critter. Oh heavens, you must come with me at once, good sir. Uncle Nildon, Claire? You two can wait here. It will not take me long. And that should do it. Once again, Sir Tolas, you have my sincere gratitude for saving Uncle Nailden's life. But do promise me you'll be more careful in the future, yes? I had a mind to oppress you with the confidence and composure you helped me regain. Instead, it would appear that I have embarrassment. They would appear I have embarrassed myself once again. No, I think it's cute. Hmm? Do you mean to say that Claire came to your aid as well? Why, she did the same for me! You don't say! And what, pray tell, did our friend do for you? <laughs> Just can't help help. <laughs> Just can't help helping folks, eh? That's all well and good, mind you, but promise me you'll take good care of yourself as you do to others. The last thing anyone in this realm wants is for you to end up like old Kofias, got it? Simply remarkable. The pain is all but gone. And you say the salvage is one of your own creation? Yes, though I cannot claim full credit, it is based on a recipe left to me by my departed father. I have had occasion to fashion a new batch. I have had occasion to fashion a few batches, and I have endeavored to improve the potency each time. This is fine medicine indeed, but we would not give for a healthy stock of it back at the imperative. Sir Tolis has just tried out the salve I fashioned. I do not mean to boast, but it's been quite well received among the guardsmen here at Fort Job as well. I would like nothing more than to be able to prepare enough to ship to every outpost, but I fear the ingredients are not so easily come by. 
As is, I can scarcely produce enough for four job. In that case, why not speak with one of the supply caravan leaders? Surely they could procure the materials you need from the markets. I fear it is not so simple, but herbs used in my father's recipes are all native to these parts. Furthermore, they have a habit of growing in the deepest, most perilous parts of the forest. That is unfortunate indeed. If we had an ample supply of your most miraculous salve at the Imperative, I dare say it would do wonders for the soldiers' morale. Is there nothing we can do? I can think of one man for the job! That's right, send out the botanist and woodcutter to go get it. But of course, the answer was right in front of us all along. If you are not otherwise occupied, Miss Kalia, might you accompany me to the Crystarium? There is someone I would very much like you to meet. Truly? But I... Well, I suppose I don't have any patience waiting at the moment. Then it is settled. If you have no pressing commitments, Claire, might you also be so kind as to accompany us as well? Not quite so sure what you have in mind, but I trust you have Kalia's best interests at heart. Take care of yourselves out there, friends. Worry not for the girl. We will see that she is safe. I have a feeling it's all going to be wrapping up soon. Good. My voice is starting to give out on me. Alright, let's just head straight on back to the Crystarium. We'll meet with our woodcutter friend. They are going to go ahead and procure a deal where they'll be able to find all the ingredients for her. And, yep, yeah, I think that would be it there. So apparently there's going to be a series of quests... Uh, with different people in each one of these different locations and at the end of it I think they just sort of just wrap them all up together I, I think it's cute I really like that idea Oh look, they're all meeting! This looks like the beginning of a beautiful friendship. This is the man Sir Tolas wishes to introduce to me? He looks so young. Well, it isn't, Claire. Come all the way back to see your friend Mom will have you. The pleasure's all mine. Here is a list of the supplies we require at the Imperative. As you will note, lumber for building is especially short supply. We are counting on you. No worries, friend. That's my specialty. By the by, who's the young lady? Something tells me you brought her for a reason. Ingredients for your potions, you say? You've come to the right place. Forest flora is second nature to me, and with my handy stink bombs, I can grab you all the herbs and weeds you need without any beasts bothering me. Truly? You would do this for me? Oh, you are too kind. I'll draft a list straight away. I do believe this will be the beginning of a highly mutual, beneficial relationship. You really are a most remarkable woman. 
It is as if, just by making your way through the world as you do, you bring together those around you, uniting them towards a common purpose. All goes according to plan, Miss Callia's medicine should avail us greatly at the imperative, giving us greater strength in the battle to defend these lands against the Sin Eaters. By bringing us together, you have not only enriched our own lives, you have given the people of Lakeland the hope of a brighter future. Once more, you have my profound gratitude, my friend. I will remember your kindness to the very end of my days. Aww, that's so nice. Well, I think that's it for now. I want to thank you all so much for watching and for bearing with me for this long video. So until next time, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy what's going to be coming next. I'm thinking about going off to Ilmeg after all this, but we'll probably see about that later on. Anyway, everyone, take care, and this is Fantasy Girl and Claire signing out.